I am seriously excited. In my hand right here, I have my brand new wedges for 2024, my Vokey SM10. Now, it's now time to take them out on the golf course. And I saw a lot of people in the comments say, how on earth can you get a wedge fitting inside? Now, I'll be honest, I was a little skeptical like you, and I'm probably still a little skeptical, because I need to now take these out on the golf course, see how they perform, see if they do exactly what they say on the tin. Because I made some adjustments in terms of different shafts, different lengths, different grinds and lie angles that I've never had before. So will they perform? Now, before we take them out on the golf course, you will have seen that I made some seriously cool customizations at the end of my previous video. So let's see exactly how you fully customize your wedges and how they were built, because I find this really interesting. If you understand what happens and then you see what happens, I think you trust your equipment a little more. So let's head to Scottsdale, see the customization process. This has to be the coolest thing that I've ever done. So I was given this sheet and asked to design exactly what I want on my wedges. So with much deliberation, I went with Trixie, Bernie, and Daisy. Trixie being my daughter, Daisy being one of my dogs, and Bernard being my other dog. And I've got a 50, 54 and 58 and this way I designed slightly different patterns on each of them and this is what I ended up with. So I'm going to go for this one in pink which is here, this one in sort of a yellowy colour, this is one of my other dogs, Bern a Daisy, and then finally this one in sort of this sort of goldy colour for Bernard. Now with the wedges you can choose from all the different finishes and this is them here. Now I've actually gone for the black but which ones would have you gone for? So these are the stamps, all the letters, all the symbols and the colors. And we will come to the colors because that's where we get into them looking absolutely fresh. Now, this is how the process works. You put some towel down, you put your wedge into this magnet and basically hit away. Now, what if I was doing this? I'd be seriously worried about hitting my thumb. Now, we started off with doing the Trixie wedge. So we're going with the name and this is just done with a very heavy hammer and a stamp time after time after time. And when you do it right, it looks absolutely incredible. How do you know where to put it, by the way? <laughs> so I've literally just drawn on with a pen. You can see on there. And I'm just gonna go straight over that. Ah, so you put a pen in these little dots, so you yeah. a marker. I'll be so scared about it in my hand. I did do it yesterday. <laughs> And the final finishing touches to the Trixie wedge is just a few little feet. Now, once you've done this wedge, we repeat the exact same process on the Daisy wedge. So we went with the name Daisy and a load of paw prints all over the wedge. Daisy is now done. We've got to go on to the final one for Bernard. We're going to put Bernie though. Look at these cool little paw prints in here. So the final one, we're going for Bernard and this is on my 58. We're going to match the paw prints we had on the Daisy wedge. And this one's going to be this color. Now, once you've done the stamping and finished the Bernie wedge, we have to then start building the wedges. Now, the color will be coming very soon, but look how they're starting to look. Let's head now head to Joe and build these wedges. And the first thing we have to do is rough up the end on the grinder, just like this. Okay, so we've actually gone for some funky little ferrules here. Look at them, if it comes into focus. Look at them, a little bit of subtle gold around the bottom. Right, next bit, talk me through it. Where are we up to? Uh, so we've cut pured the shafts. We've yeah, yeah, we've pured the shafts, we've prepped. So we've just made it a little bit rougher at the bottom. Now we're cutting to length. And I've got different lengths, haven't I? So I've you gone, have, actually, gone shorter. Which is mad, because actually it felt like I had a kiddies club in my hand, which is <laughs> More <laughs> control. I haven't even thought of doing that before. Not many people do. You tend to see it a little bit more with woods but not as often with so yeah. 35 and a quarter. Because I went um, short with my, my driver that you fitted me for. You did. This is where I'm going to test you. What was it? 45, <laughs> half short. <laughs> the video is up, so you do realise we can go back and we'll check. We'll go back and double check, <laughs> but I'm confident with it. And then this is the... Sorry, it's us. It's a 54. So we're, they're all playing, but half, half short. Half so short. 35 is your 54. Just to make sure I put the right shaft in the 50. Oh, yeah. Different shaft, haven't I? What have I gone for in my 50? It's the dollar taper. So a little bit heavier, probably a touch firmer. Play a bit more like a normal or iron shaft. A little shaft. bit more like an iron shaft where you've gone a little bit heavier but softer in the, in the 54 and the 58. 
And I'll be honest, I'm dying to see what that feels like on the golf course. So once all the lengths have been marked, put it in the machine and just simply cut away. This machine is actually one of the most satisfying things ever. So what's this for? Just to make sure the swing weight... Swing weight's correct, yeah. So the balance between the clubs is the same, so they don't feel one too heavy or too light from wedge to wedge. And what will these wedges be, roughly? They will play a touch light, so we can add a little bit more weight. And that comes out. A little bit more weight in the tip end, just because you add one a little bit shorter. Yeah. So we just need to probably add a little bit more weight towards the head to make the balance a little bit more consistent. Otherwise, what would it feel like? So if someone cut something down and didn't swing weight right, what would it that... It affects the, the overall weight of the club, but also how it'll make the head feel a lot lighter. Because most people will realise this when they change sometimes a putter grip as well, how it makes things feel slightly different. I know feel you're not affecting length, but different. the feel yeah. is most probably the most relative for people. Those ferals look good, by the way, with the uh, black head on. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Good choice then. Good choice. 2.4. So what's the weight of they all? So just for argument's sake at the moment, without a head, without that weight in there, that yeah. will come out at C C8. Where without a weight that's D.24. So now they're both playing around sort of D.25. So weight wise. They'll feel and play. A lot more consistent, yeah. So now onto gluing all the heads. So they don't fall off, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, that, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to glue the weight in slightly. Yes, so I've added weight to the to the brass weight. Glue in the head. Glue it just to secure that in there. A bit of a clean up. That looks really cool with that ferrule. Just line that up there. So for people wondering what this tape is here, when these shafts were pure, that showed the perfect location. And you know we got the, the drive on the hard side and the soft side, what have we done these on? Hard again. Hard again. Yeah. Look at me thinking like I know what I'm on about now. <laughs> and once all the heads are glued on and the shaft pured line matches up with the top of the club, we have to let the glue cure. Now, once this has been cured for roughly 10 to 15 minutes, we can then take the wedges over to Loft and Lime. So, what machine. are we doing first, then? So, we'll start with the 50 and we'll, we'll work down. So, what we're doing to start off with, you've got fitted for two degrees flat. Yeah. So, we're just going to bend them. Just get them nice and tight, make sure it's lined up. Double check the loft. That's already playing one degree flat, you see. So, we don't have to move it as much. Get that on there. Okay, so with a Vokey wedge, in, in this case, we're looking at 50, 54, 58. Normally they play at 64, where we're going two degrees flat, so we want that to be 62. Perfect. And now we're on to the 54? 54? 54, yeah. And is that lie angle the same throughout the Vokey wedges? 64. That's their standard, yeah. yeah. And on to the final wedge, my 58. It really does go through me, and I... I'm amazed how much force you have to put into these wedges when trying to bend them to get the correct lie angle and loft. Now, like we already know, this loft is absolutely spot on, but we're trying to make sure these wedges play flat. This is something that I've never had before, but it should really help my strike location and start line. Now, on to the second to penultimate area before we actually get these wedges coloured up. This is just to make sure the ferrule is nice and smooth and there's no overhang to where it meets the club head. Final bit of polish, and now we can take it over to the gripping station. Now, like with all my golf clubs, I go with the exact same grips. I've gone for Lamkin, and I have the logo facing downwards. No real reason. I just like to not see the logo when I'm playing. I just think it puts me off a little bit. Three times over, and now these wedges are ready to be coloured. Yes, they're ready to be coloured. And some of you eagle-eyed viewers will notice that I've actually gone for a different colour on the daisy wedge. I didn't realise they had white, so I went for a white colouring because simply daisy is a white coloured dog. 
So put it on there, wipe the excess away, and you have to let it set for roughly around 20 minutes. Once you've let it set, we can then use a bit of a solution to rub away any excess to stop it staining on the golf club. Have a look at this one. This gold looks absolutely pure. Well, I guess a goldy, bronzy color for Bernard. Absolutely pops. And the final one, the Trixie Wedge, the pink. I have to say, the pink against the black has to be my favorite. But we've now finally got a finished product. Look how good these wedges are. I'm actually dying to take these out on the golf so course. So now you know how I fully customize my wedges and how the wedges were built. And I'm not going to lie. I find that part of golf so interesting. So I hope you do too. It's now time to head to the golf course. And I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not going to lie. Will these perform as good as they did inside in the fitting? I've not hit a bunker shot with them before. I've not hit full shots off grass. I'm not hit chip shots off grass. I'm a little nervous. But let's see if these grinds, these lofts, these shafts, and this lie angle change really is good for my game. So I'm now down here at Motcham Hall. We're now out on the golf course, and it's time to see how these wedges perform in the real world. So we're going to hit some chip shots, some pit shots, some bunker shots. I'm interested to see how these work. I can't wait to see the spin, the flight, and actually see if we can replicate what I got in the fitting with Will. By the way, I never asked, which one is your favourite? The Daisy, the Bernie, or the Trixie? The pink does look very good, but so does the white, and so does the gold. I'm going to have to say my daughter's wedge, aren't I? I've got to. And that is my favourite, I'll be honest. So... Let's start with the 50, actually. This is the Trixie Wedge. Let's get a glove. Let's get some golf balls. And let's start hitting them away. Now, I was a little bit sceptical on hitting some wedges on the golf course because, as you all said, you got fitted inside. <laughs> what was really nice to see is that how hit? that ball Stuff performed. To attention. And what I mean how the ball performed Whoa. is how much spin I was getting this on these wedges. The how the wedge. grind felt like it interacted with the ground. Now here we're roughly around sort of 45 yards on the flag and this is just sort of like a low to medium sort of check and stop shot that I play. And one that, I'll be honest, in the past I've not really had much control over. Then we moved on to some shorter shots just off the side of the green. So we've hit a few medium chips, we've hit a few off the side of the green. I'm dying to hit a few more full of wedge shots. So let's head back to that, I'm going to go... 60, 70 yard marker, 50 degree. Let's just hit three or four away from here before we have a look at the other wedges. I love that flight. Look how low and driven it is. Whew, that looks pretty close from here. I've never hit a wedge like that before. And after hitting some full wedge shots with my 50, it's now time to move on to my 58. And this is the Bernie wedge. We'll start with some bunker shots. I always use my 58 in bunkers as this is my most comfortable shot. Now, after hitting some bunker shots, I thought, you know what? We'll try those high tariff ones. Now, I never play this shot in a tournament, but I thought, let's play some high floppers. And you know what? Look how consistent they were. That grind. That bounce. Did you just see those pitch shots I just played? I stand corrected. They were lob chip shots. That bounce, that K grind on this 58, 14 degrees, just felt so good through that turf. And finally, let's hit some with the daisy wedge. This is my 56 degree. And this is a scenario that I would use it. A little bit of thick rough, half in the air, half roll out. That one rolled out a little bit too much, but I over pitched it. Now this one was an absolute gem. Then I thought on this final one, I'll try and hit like a low hooking runner feel. And look how this turned out. And this is what I love about these wedges. How I feel like I can use them in all scenarios. Okay, so now after hitting loads of different shots, different yardages, short shots, long shots, with every single one of these wedges, I can confirm, like, I'm actually surprised, like, the feeling of the quality of the hit. And what I mean by the quality of the hit is I'm not getting that glancy feeling like I've had with any of my wedges in the past. I just think I found grinds and lofts and lie angles and length of shaft that really does just suit me. And you know what? I'm dying to get these out fully in a competition. Dying to get these fully out in a vlog. I do hope you enjoyed this video of me testing, actually, and taking and unboxing my brand new wedges for 2024.